One thing I hope you've noticed is that the electrodes don't always react. In the copper zinc cell, the zinc electrode was oxidized, but the copper electrode was just providing a location for the copper two ions to be reduced. Okay? Cells can be constructed using electrodes that don't even have a chance to react. These are inert electrodes. Okay, they have to be conductors. And we usually use platinum or carbon. So if you see platinum or carbon in cell notation, do not look for them in the redox table because you're not going to find them. They're just being used as an electrode to provide a surface for redox to occur. All right, so here's the next example I want us to look through. Oops, ignore that. So we're going to find the anode and cathode, the net cell reaction for this cell. That looks pretty interesting. So it's platinum in a solution of both chromium-2 and chromium-3 with a tin half cell. All right, as before, we're just going to look in our redox table, find the SOA and the SRA. So I'm starting at the top left. I see tin-4. We don't have tin-4. Let's keep looking. Oh, gotta look a couple times. Whoa, what's that? I see tin two. That's our SOA. Let's find our SRA now. So we'll start at the bottom right. Chromium 2. Okay, to get our net, we just need two of these guys to balance the electrons. I'll do that quickly. Okay, now let's identify the anode and the cathode. So the SOA was tin 2. It gained electrons, that's reduction. At the farm I saw red cat. Reduction occurs at the cathode. Okay, the cathode has to be the solid conductor, which in this case will be tin. Notice tin doesn't react. The SRA was oxidized at the anode. That chromium two is what was oxidized. It's oxidizing into chromium-3, so this concentration will go up. But that makes the platinum the anode. It's not part of the reaction, but it is necessary for this cell to operate. 